Welcome to another fall edition of Gentle Somatic Yoga and other tools for um, seasonal health. And I've gotten very interested in focusing on how to stay healthy depending on the season. And if you've been following along with this series, we've done a lot of different things for grounding, for um, calming vata, which is um, sort of dryness and airiness and spaciness for um, supporting the, um, the um, organ systems that are more affected during the fall. And um, just in general for um, feeling just um, healthier. Your immune system is also very compromised during the fall. So there's been a lot of healthy living advice throughout this. So we will start standing, but I still want you as much as possible during the fall practices to either keep your eyes downward or neutral, not looking up so much because um, that can be very ungrounding for you and really focus on your lower body, um, feeling your feet in the ground, feeling the strength of your legs. And then we will work um, with the breath flow that is downward, which is known as apana, the apana breath flow. So let's start with a wide legged position and just kind of rock back and forth a few times Check in um, to make sure your knees are comfortable over the feet. If your feet are too wide and your knees are crumbling in, take your feet and turn them slightly in um, instead of forcing your knees out. And let's go ahead and just go up and down a few times, really focusing on this downward movement of breath and downward movement of energy. Feel your feet really stable on the ground. And then um, stay down here momentarily and lift a heel and the other heel and one heel and the other heel. You should really feel the muscles of the leg activating in something like this. Go ahead and straighten the knees again. This time point your toes toward the front. Maybe have a slight bend in the legs and um, initially come down if you can with a flattened back and then round your back and then re-flatten the back and round the spine as you pull the belly in and re-flatten and round the spine and re-flatten. Now, if you are having any dizziness or uncontrolled blood pressure, you don't want to go all the way down. You could put your hands on the wall or chair. If you're feeling okay today, Go ahead and settle into a wide-legged forward fold. And you might just shrug the shoulders a few times upside down and sway forward and backward on your feet. So when I'm leaning back, maybe trying to lift the toes, going forward onto the toes, just gentle. So one of the meridians that needs to be supported in the fall is a large intestine meridian, and it does connect to your colon. So we will be doing some twists today. If you're once again, okay, staying down like this, um, or just putting your hands on a block, bend an elbow and just let's start to do a gentle twisting action. If this is too much again, 
you could be hands on a chair twisting like this. So just gently twisting and then softening in between. Your head does not have to follow if you have some neck issues. You could leave the head stationary, but if you want to, your head can go with the waist and twisting action. All right, come back to stillness. Bend the knees even further, lengthening the spine again, breathing, and then making your way up to standing and shaking things out. Let's just move in any sort of organic fashion that feels releasing to you. In between these little routines, it's always nice to just explore what your body actually wants. <laughs> ah, and for me, in general, my body tends to really like side to side motions. So when I am given the choice, I'm almost always going to do something like this side to side, but you might have a preferred sort of way of moving that's really calming to your nervous system. Maybe it's circling, maybe you like forward and back motion, but really just find out what your nervous system and what your body really needs. All right, so let's do a little bit more with the feet. Um, if you're not ready to balance yet, you could keep a hand on the wall if you feel like you're ready to challenge your balance, go ahead and do this in the middle of the floor. So I'm going to point and flex one set of toes and then switch to the other side. Whoa, <laughs> always a little more challenging on one side. And then um, sickle the foot. So it's kind of like a windshield wiper. And then do that with the other foot. You might hear some creaks and cracks. One of the things that happens in the fall, those of us that are creaky, because we have more vata in us, tend to even be creakier. <laughs> and our joints are a little bit more bothered in the fall. So I'm circling now. You might want to circle. All right, so let's that now rub the knees a little bit. And then if your knees are okay with this, keeping your hands on the kneecaps and now circling this set of joints and then circling them the other way. Let's see how they are, give them a rub down. And then let's move to the hips and um, you could place your thumbs on the backs and the four fingers in the front, and then just scoop the pelvis a few times, just noticing that mo mo motion. <laughs> <clears throat> and then let's hike a hip, come back to the center. And actually, I like to do this hip hiking um, with our feet slightly closer together so that you really get a hip hike and then come back hip hike and come back, hip hike and back, hip hike and back. And then maybe widen the feet one more time and then do the full circling. But first round goes super slowly. So pelvic tucking first, hip hiking on one side, second, um, the, the butt sticking out, third, hip hiking the other side, fourth, and then smooth this out. So really seeing if you can isolate the muscles, and the fascia around the hips. And then let's go the other way, starting slow, 
Just carve yourself out, first of all. Hip hiking, one side, second. Butt out, third. Hip hiking, the other side, fourth. Now smooth it out this direction. When you notice any sort of hitch in your movement, you can pause there. So let's say you're hearing clicking or it's not moving smoothly here. You would pause at this point, engage the muscles firmly by pulling everything in and contracting, and then mindfully, slowly releasing. That's a pandiculation. That is really helpful in somatic yoga to release chronic tension. All right, so moving up one more time to the rib cage. Um, it's nice to start with the hands on the ribs just to make sure this is where you're working. But afterwards, if this is uncomfortable for your shoulders, you can do this without um, working with the arms like this, because I know that can tense people's shoulders. So first start again, forward and back. So we did this with the hips. Now we're trying to do this with the rib cage. So really feel the movement in the rib cage. See if you can isolate that. All right, now we're gonna try to do side to side. So this one's a little more interesting. It's, uh, it's not tilting it yet. It's just engaging one side, opening the other side of the rib cage, coming to the middle, engaging the other side and coming to the middle. And really the way to think about this is if you were into this song years ago, walk like an Egyptian, you know, walk like an Egyptian kind of thing. So you're really trying to move this rib cage. Okay, so now let's see if we can move it in all four directions. So rib cage jutting out, rib cage to the side, rib cage pulled in, rib cage to the other side. See if you can smooth that out. If you had a hula hoop way up high and you're trying to keep it there. Okay, slow it down and go the other direction. and then smooth it out. So when we isolate like this, it really helps us see where we're actually not moving our body. And anywhere you're not moving your body is where you're gonna end up with congestion and stiffness. So being able to focus on one part of the body at the time is really a really helpful thing. Let's do our shoulders next. And um, we often do this um, lying down either on our side, but this can be done standing up. So draw the shoulder up to your ear and then release it. Draw the shoulder down by pulling the arm down, release it to center. Now draw the shoulder forward by turning the hand inside out, feeling the front of the pec activate. Release, draw the shoulder back by turning the hand this way, outward. So this should be felt right back behind the shoulder and release. So now let's see if we can put all that together. Shoulder up, shoulder forward, shoulder down, shoulder back. Smooth it out trying to lubricate all of our joints. And now let's reverse direction. Shoulder up, shoulder back, shoulder down, shoulder forward, smooth it out. Shake it out, just move it organically. Ah. And let's do the other side. Start slow. We'll do um, first shoulder up. Come to neutral. Draw the hand down, depressing the shoulder. Come to neutral. 
shoulder forward by turning the hand inside out, feeling the pec engage, neutral, turn the hand outward, feeling the back of the shoulder engage, neutral. Now let's put this all together. Shoulder up, shoulder forward, shoulder down, shoulder back. Smooth it out. And now let's reverse. Shoulder up, shoulder back, shoulder down, forward. Smooth it out. Hopefully you're still feeling your feet firmly planted into the earth. Let's go ahead and move in any way organically. You might even try to walk around your room with opposite leg and opposite shoulder. So like this, a little exaggerated, called walking like a model. But we wanna see if we've gotten all of our joints a little more lubricated, a little more willing to move. All right, go back to any sort of organic movement that feels good to you. Let's do a balance while we're standing. And um, we've been working a lot on very strong supportive tree poses. So make a space near your wall, move things out of the way. We're gonna start, if you can, if you have enough space to lean up against the wall as close as possible so that you feel parts of your body touching the wall and then decide which leg you'll bring up into some sort of tree. And then maybe you wanna bring your arms into cactus or maybe all the way up. So I'm gonna lean first and then, oops, <laughs> I'm gonna try to pull myself off the wall and see if I'm still able to balance. Breathing. Okay, shaking it out. Tough, tough, tough for me, especially when I'm on my right foot. So I'm gonna start with the wall supporting me as I set up in some fashion of tree. And I'm keeping my arms in cactus today. Once I feel supported, I'm gonna see if I can come off the wall. Mm, interesting balance for me today. Whew. And shake that out. We'll do one more version of tree. We've been practicing um, with the knee um, leaning against the, um, the wall. So now you're sideways to the wall and you're placing your leg on your um, other leg and having the knee touch the wall and then going back into a tree pose. This to me feels much easier than the other one. Breathing. And that, again, we're trying to get a little more feedback to activate the muscles of the legs. You should feel this strongly in your legs. And then setting up for the other side. Ooh, breathing, feeling the strength. Releasing. And then if you'd like to use your wall or a chair to do um, a wide legged forward fold again, just to kind of chill out a little bit. So walking away from the wall or the chair, widening your legs a little bit, leaning back, lengthening the spine, breathing, <sighs> releasing. All right, coming back towards the wall or the chair, 
and um, setting up for the rest of the class will be some version of floor work. So you might wanna get your blanket spread out to cover your mat. If you have something to slightly elevate your hips, either a bolster or a rolled blanket, you might want to use this initially. When we shift into our seated floor work. So let's go ahead and just check in for a minute. I think this is the time that I will do the guided breath um, practice. And this could be done lying down as well, but I'm gonna do it seated for you. I'll just do a scan, just notice if you're feeling the energy flowing a little bit more through your body through this short movement practice we did. So a big part um, of the fall as a seasonal healing practice is the idea of letting go and so when we're noticing our breath, we're going to notice the downward movement of the breath first into our lower belly. So you might take your hands and place them there. And this again is a Pana Bayou. So just in any fashion that feels right for you, Activate a lower belly breathing practice. Come aware of your breath going all the way down and even visualize that this is supporting the organs of your lower body, which is in a physical sense, some of the organs that help us let go, let go of waste that we know we don't need. If you hold tension in your pelvic area or your sacrum, sometimes it's because we hold ourselves so tightly down there. So just breathe deeply into this part of the body and visualize this letting go. So gently, if you can, move your hands up closer to your rib cage. Um, just momentarily placing your hands on your lower ribs. So now seeing if you can sense the breath coming there. Just noticing this might feel more like a horizontal breath. So how do you feel with this kind of breath practice? Can you let go of tension in this area? And how does this breath help you release some tension around the rib cage? So next, place your hands and maybe stack them on your chest near your heart. And breathing in and out of your heart. 
So what can you let go of emotionally? Keep the breath slow and steady and just notice if this is a comfortable place to breathe in and out of and if this allows you to let go of any emotional baggage or things that are weighing on your heart. So next, maybe take your hands and you could cover your eyes and maybe place some fingers on your third eye in the center. And just imagine the breath is flowing upward to this area. Is this comfortable or uncomfortable breathing up towards the head? And what thoughts and beliefs can you let go of that may no longer be serving you? So go ahead and release the hands, place them on your lap. Your hands, you can have your thumb and your index finger touching each other and you can either have the hands down, which is grounding and rooting, or palms up for receiving, whichever feels more pertinent today. And just check in with all the, the different places you breathe into. So when you're ready, gently open your eyes. You might want to change the cross of your legs and even come off the, uh, the cushion. And let's just move organically again for a moment, creating rainbows on a palette in front of us, or I'm not a painter, so <laughs> I might not be using the right terms, but I'm moving my shoulder and my upper body in many different vectors just to keep things flowing and not just work in the same way, the same pattern every time, which can create all sorts of interesting blockages and muscle imbalances. We tend to be so repetitive in our movement. Let's explore new movements. Just check in. How are these movements landing in your body? Go ahead and cross the arms into some sort of eagle pose or maybe just grabbing the shoulders, whichever is more comfortable. And then open things up and then the other arm on top, either just grabbing shoulders or eagle arms. Ah, and then go ahead and release that and shake things out. And let's just do a check-in. So working the large intestine meridian um, momentarily, we'll do a, a seated twist. And um, you may wanna go back up onto your cushion or prop. You're going to take one leg and draw it in super, super close, creating a little bit of compression on the organs inside of you with this foot very close. 
Then activate the muscles of the other leg, but let that leg go out slightly, opening it up. Keep those muscles activated, sitting up, and then you can place your hand behind you, either on a block or on the ground, and go ahead and twist into that, feeling the compression on these organs, breathing into it, softening to the front and releasing, and then going back into that, lifting up, Feel a compression of all the organs. It's almost like a ringing out. See if you can keep that other leg, the straight leg, a little bit active. And go ahead and releasing it back to the front again, softening. And last time, lifting, twisting, feeling the muscles activated, but also the twisting of the internal organs and come back to the front. Now allow this leg to fall toward the side. You can land either on something or just on the ground. Your other leg is still active. Face that leg, lift up the arms, gently fall toward that leg. Softening back, inhaling, lifting, exhaling, reaching, softening back, inhaling, lifting, exhaling, reaching, softening back. Bend up that leg, place the foot on the ground. For a moment, actually reach under that foot lifting the foot up enough so that you can find the kidney one, which is uh, below the pad of your foot in the instep in the middle. Kidney one is the lowest uh, meridian point, acupressure point on the body. It's a very earthing point, grounding point but it's also connected to your um, kidney channel, which means it's also a water point. So it's a very big, important point. Go ahead and place that foot on the ground. Take your head close to the leg or on the knee, and then slide the foot away. Don't go into pain here. You wanna feel a little bit of sensation, not pain. Release it completely to seated, leg out, stretch, activate the muscles for a minute. Bend that back up, place the head again on the leg, toward the knee, start to slide away. As soon as you start feeling too much sensation in the lower spine, release back to neutral. Reactivate the muscles of that leg. Flex the to toes. One last time. Slide it away. Now face the middle of your body and just release down gently into a forward fold. And come back up between the two sides, placing hands behind you, windshield wipering, some sort of organic movement that feels nourishing to you. And then setting up for the twisting series on the other side, you might want to go back up onto the cushion, drawing your foot very close towards your body, lifting up, feel the compression on those organs in your digestive area. Well, slightly opening the other leg up, activating the muscles of this leg, slightly flexing that foot and setting up for a twist toward this side, toward the bent knee, lifting first, twisting, 
feeling all the ringing out of those internal organs, coming back, softening, releasing to the front, activating the twist again, lifting, don't collapse if you can help it. Notice what you're working. Notice what you're releasing in the front, letting go. So sometimes the action of the twist can help us actually let go more easily after we release it. It's that ringing out feeling. Last time, twisting, releasing to the front, letting go. Now, you might want to come off your um, cushion. Let the knee go down of the bent leg. Face the straight leg. Activate the muscles of that leg. Feel the whole leg activated. Lift up on an inhale. Hold forward, exhale, softly come back. Inhaling, lift, exhaling, forward, fold, come back. Notice where you're unable to let go. Can you soften? <clears throat> Bending up the knee for a moment. Find the kidney one spot on this foot, center of the foot, right below the pad. Use your fingers to massage it. Place the foot back on the ground. Head can come close to the knee or on the knee. Begin to work that leg away from you, sliding along your blanket and releasing to neutral when you get to that point where you're feeling too much tugging. Two more times. This is my creakier side. I'm hearing all sorts of creaks and cracks. Vata season, creaky season. Hopefully you've transitioned from eating a lot of summer salads to fall soups, which are so nourishing for you in this season. Good for your digestive system, good for warming up the body completely. Go ahead and lean forward and release. And draw knees toward each other, hands behind the back, opening up the chest, windshield wipering. And let's make our way. Well, let's transition to hands and knees just to um, make our way onto the belly for just a couple of things, which are really good for um, the lower body and particularly the low back. Um, make sure that you have things out of your way, but nearby. So we'll start on hands and knees just to keep the middle of the body in a twisting action. Lift up the feet, allow your body to be twisting side to side as if you were a dog, looking over at its tail as it's wagging it. And now let's just shift forward and back a few times. Coming on to the forearms, lifting up. <sighs> Using your breath. And then next time, gently make your way onto your belly. 
and fold the arms on top of each other, whichever arm you want to be on top for a moment. Lay your head on the top of the arms. Lift up the bottoms of the legs and just swish a little side to side. Lengthen both legs and flatten the feet momentarily. And then tuck the toes. See if you can get all the toes to tuck in. Activate the muscles of the legs strongly. Soften the muscles of the legs. Untuck the toes. And do that a second time. So tuck the toes in. See if you can even get the pinky toe to tuck in. Lifting the knees off the ground, engaging the muscles of the legs. Softening the legs, releasing the feet. Now on the next time, we're gonna add the upper body movement in it. Tuck all the toes in, engage the bottom of the feet, engage the legs, lift the knees off the ground. Slightly come up. Make sure that you are engaging the muscles of the legs and the belly and you're not feeling too much compression in the low back. If this is too much compression, don't lift up as high. Breathing. Release the legs. Release the feet. Release the upper body. Soften. Draw one knee off to the side. Keep the other leg engaged. Tuck the toes in, lift the knee off the ground. Lift up into a back bend. Don't go too high. Breathing. And then coming on down, releasing this leg down. Taking the other leg, drawing it off to the side in half crocodile pose. Tuck the toes of the straight leg. Engage the muscles of that leg. Lift the upper body, feeling the strength here. And softening it down, releasing everything. Drawing hands, chest tight, elbows drawn back. You can just rest your forehead on the ground or you can bobble it. And then just do swimming shoulders for a bit, just to release the shoulders. Release the shoulders, release them back. You're making more of an oval shape than a circle. Widen the hands away from the bodies and just rotate the shoulders forward as if you're a butterfly. -er. And then rotate them back. Make a pillow again with your arms. You can turn the head from the side for a moment. Resting here. Checking in. And then gently turn the head to the other side. Resting here. And then we're going to make our way on to our backs. Oh, this is where that cushion might be useful, but let's check in first before we grab it. In any sort of fashion, either legs bent, feet on the ground, or completely stretched out, maybe gently turning the head side to side a few times. Ah, oh, go ahead and check in, see how you're feeling. Let's try that same breath practice we did seated, laying down before we transition into more movement. If you need something under your neck, supporting your head a little bit more, go ahead and grab that. And um, you can have your knees bent if you want to, or your legs 
outstretch. Take your hands and place them on your lower belly. Breathe till you feel your hands gently rise and fall. Directing that breath deeply into the lower body, apana, vayu, downward current of energy and breath. Visualizing that you are letting go of anything that's holding on here, any congestion or things that are not moving smoothly down there. Now take your hands and place them on the rib cage and direct your breath to the rib cage. Letting go of tension in this area. Now stacking your hands gently on your chest near the heart center. Breathing directly in and out of the heart center. What emotions or attitudes can you let go? What are no longer serving you? What are we holding on to? As long as we release emotions regularly, we can move forward in life. It's when we don't release them. It's not that you're not going to feel them, all the different emotions. It's just when you're holding on to them, hanging on them, that they can really become congestion around the heart. And lastly, now maybe taking the hands behind the head, your brain stem, Another way to think about letting go of thoughts and beliefs. Breathing into this area. We're going to do a lying down twist, but we'll be using that um, cushion under our hips. So we, we want it to be below the spine if possible. And you may end up needing also a block to lay your feet onto when you get into this twist. So um, If you need something under your head, make sure it's not too much, just a little bit. And then this will go under your hips. <clears throat> and you're going to shift your hips to one side so that you can twist to the other side. But once again, some of you might need, your, your feet will be hanging in the air. So you might need something to put your feet onto or the lower leg so you're not hanging. So it's like this. Um, so you're twisting. You, you're going to get more of a twist with your hips elevated like this. Again, you've got to be aware of if this is too much for you. There's you know, a couple of adjustments you could make, like you could take your feet, your legs further in like that, or again, leaning onto something. Try as much as possible to have your shoulder to the ground. And some of us might need a support behind our shoulder to allow our shoulder to touch onto something. So I'm going to 
cradle this other thing underneath my shoulder since my shoulder is not able to touch the ground there. So this is a pretty intense twist. You don't wanna to stay here too long, but this should really target the large intestine and colon and clear out congestion there. Breathe. And again, if this doesn't work for you for whatever reason, too much for your back, you could just do a regular twist laying down. We're not gonna hold it too long. So you're gonna have to shift your props a little bit, maybe for a second centering in the middle. Ah. <sighs> and then shifting the hips to the opposite side so that you can now bend your legs and allow you allow yourself to twist uh, trying to make sure your shoulder and arm is touching something on the ground and again you may not want your feet just hanging in the air so i've put a block under my lower legs so that I'm, I'm getting the twisting action with the elevated hip, but still not my feet. It's just too much muscular effort sometimes if your feet are hanging in the air. The other way to accomplish this again is to draw the knees closer into your body. You can decide if you like that. So this is really going to be a clearing of your colon and large intestine and that whole meridian. All right, so very gently, let's come back toward the center again and if you want, you could hang here for a little bit. You might see if you like the idea of stretching your legs out. See how that feels. If that's too much compression on your low back, keep the knees bent and maybe the feet wider than hip distance. You can decide what feels appropriate. Just hanging here, breathing. And then we'll use this prop under our hips one last time for legs in the air. And if you want to do this against a wall or just use a strap to help you in some fashion, try not to engage the upper body you're trying to really relax the upper body. Slow your breathing down. Notice if you are feeling a little more grounded, energized, but grounded. And whenever you're ready, you could shift this bolster or pillow or whatever you have under your kneecaps and you might want to cover yourself. And I don't know if you have an eye pillow or anything like that. Anyway, to get super comfortable in your Shavasana. Okay. <sighs>
So one of the um, other themes that can happen um, in this transitional season and particularly in fall, if you have an, an excess of vata in you, is um, you can feel anxious, overwhelmed and anxious. So today's reading from Mark Nepo addresses that and really like it. It's called Spirit and Psychology. Each of us is like a great untamed sea, obedient to deeper currents that are seldom visible. Knowing this gives us three insights worth keeping in our awareness. First, we must consider that the deepest patch of ocean is as clear as its surface wave, though it remains unseeable to the human eye that bobs above it. Second, how far we can see into the deep depends on the calmness or turbulence of the surface. And third, just as the depth and the surface of the sea are inseparable, so too are the spirit and the psychology of each human being. It is our deep sounding untamed currents that cause us to rise and swell, dip and crash. Yet the base of spirit remains unaffected by the storms that churn up the surface. It obeys a deeper order. Still, we as beings living in the world are always subject to both, the depth and the surface, our spirit and our psychology. Though we can never see all the way to the bottom on clear days, when our psychology is calm, we can know that the depth that carries us. When free of the turbulence and anxiety, we can know the ocean of spirit that swells within. So just something to reflect upon. This signals the end of our time together today. Find your way gently to seated, take your time. And then gather, gather any parts of today's practice that were particularly helpful to you. Draw hands to heart, Let's acknowledge each other on our own healing journey. And when we practice together, a collective healing journey. And Sophie has joined us. <laughs> Namaste.